So I just rescanned it again, and it does appear that we have bubbles forming right here. You can see it, micro bubbles. Um, it's such a big area all the way around there that that's... This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So we're here for no cooling, or I should say it's just too hot. What we've got is a old beastly air handler. I don't believe I've done anything on this one. Not real super familiar with this system. It's just older than Methuselah. Outdoor air temperature, this is all pneumatics. This is hodgepodge city. We've got humidity controls and some of it works, some of it doesn't. A lot of it probably doesn't. It's hot deck, cold deck, which means you've got one cold coil with a hot coil and you damper between the two of them based off of what you need. So what I just did prior to get, you know, coming online here with you is I just turned off my disconnect box over there. I was looking at the compressor, which just is train stuff, which means you can't really convert it to a different refrigerant because it'll blow up and usually shortly after. We've had a few that worked, quite a few that haven't. So not the greatest, you know, idea to try to do. So it is R22, so they're looking at about probably $2,500 plus dollars in refrigerant. But what we've got here, we have a sight glass that was completely looking empty. We've got a hot gas bypass valve back here on the back that was dumping hot gas into the evaporator. This is water cooled on top of that. So it basically is a pump and dump. It dumps uh, uh, city water or well water, I forget which one it is, into the condenser coil there. The head pressure control valve here controls it based off a of discharge, which is down there on that liquid line. The last one I worked on, the motor was bad. So that was pretty easy. That's working. So I stopped the flow, airflow, so that we can maybe look for a refrigerant leak. I guess recently we had the pop-off valve back here, pop off right there. And essentially what that means on some of the bigger systems is they will blow the refrigerant charge. I gotta remember this is probably way before all the uh, environmental stuff. This nightmare is 460 volts. We got the Stratus ready to go, warmed up. I did see oil up here. Did find some leaking here on the valve there. That had popped off, I guess. Like I said earlier, possibly that had blown off earlier this year when uh, the pressure switch failed to shut it down. So we get it on the super position. If I go to the parts per million, usually that tells me if it's just an accumulation of something there. And it went up to like 15 a little bit ago. Now the unit is off and there was something in there. So when it's running with a couple hundred pounds of pressure, I'd be curious to see how bad it's leaking. Now that could get a cap on it, which would be potentially dangerous, but don't know exactly what we need to do on that. It should be replaced, but then you have to recover the whole system. We may have to put a cap on it until we can get back. I you know, really don't know at this point. But so far I've scanned all of the little capillary tubes and all these little valves back here in the back. And for the most part, everything looks pretty good. Nothing uh, leaking off the discharge, suction, anything like that. And that's on my highest setting. Uh-oh, there we go, there we go. Got something there. Let's go to parts per million and see what we get. Uh, that's a pretty good size leak. That is a very good size leak. Cap would be kind of nice on that. Always should be checking in your regular mode here, super mode, high mode, whatever. Um, PPM is not fast reacting. It's not made to be reacting. Did speak with uh, Inficon at the AHR show and they did say that it does take uh, 10 to 15 minutes to get the best performance out of this, which I did not believe, but I drilled and drilled and drilled and they're claiming yes, it does better as it gets warmer and even uh, Clayton, our other guy that I've uh, got the same one says he notices the same thing. I have not up until recently so 
the battery life on this is crazy long anyway. Yeah, see, there's a little bit there on that. So we got a little bit of a leak there and we got a big leak on this one. All right, let's go ahead and spray that. That is the only other thing other than the evaporator, which I already was told leaks. Got the big blue here. Let's see what it does. Oh my gosh, look at that. Let's see if we can get solid stream. That's the way I like to do it. Look at that. Look at that. That is a good size leak, and that was running high pressure a little bit ago. Yes, sir. Not good. All right, so that is really warm from the boiler coil up above running. I did find the cap down here on the ground. So we're going to put some nylog on that thing and crank it down and see how it does. So we got the nylog on there on the threads all over. Got a wrench on there. We're going to tighten her up just a touch. And let's see how this does. Let's see what we get on super mode here. Very little. Like I said, there's a that valve is actually hot. Three parts per million. Could be residual, could be from the nylog possibly, but not seeing any leakity leaky leakity. But I tell you what, that definitely would have done it. Alright, so let's see the air conditioning coil looks like it's right there. Fears that kind of goes up in here. That's some thick metal too. But like I said, here's some of the dampers open and close. Got two different ducts going out. I'm pretty sure that might be the difference. One's hot, one's cold. But you can see they went over there. I don't think that's return because the return's coming into the back side. Yeah. Yep. So you can see here, you've got one that's going to be cold and one that's going to be hot. You got your steam boiler lines right there. Um, I don't know how big that coil is, so I can't really just drill in there. I can maybe drill a hole into here in the duct just to see if we got something big going on. All right, so I was correct. You can see that top area there comes across. There is the uh, lines for the boiler. And you can see right here is the fan. It's a uh, fan blade's gonna be in here turning. It's gonna come through up through that area and it's going to go through that area there. The two ducts are going to be straight on out. So the dampers are going to be out in the office area from what I've been told. Very similar to a VAV. You can see we've got a little leaking. There's an actuator right there. Let's go ahead. I'm trying to get my last scanning done here, which I picked up on something a little bit back here. Yeah, not picking up a lot over here, but I need to get inside there for a good uh, yeah, this is so super, super safe. It's a great setup. Quite the interesting venture. So what I worked on the last time was that motor up there. You can see it's a newer one. A little bit easier to get to, sort of. All right, so what we ended up doing, since this was the thinnest metal, I was gonna try to do it here, but way too difficult. So we went ahead and drilled a hole. We're coming in there on our most sensitive mode, scanning around, I'm not getting anything. We're looking for huge leaks here. We already know that it leaks supposedly in that coil from what I'm hearing from some of the other guys that had been here. I can feel that hitting the top, so there is definitely a divider between there. I'm not getting anything. Uh, this thing is leaked. Uh, on a routine basis and you just can't get them to replace it because this obviously is going to be super expensive and very difficult to get in here you've got so much stuff in the warehouse here in the way uh, whatever excuse you want to say whatever it's their money so whatever so we got everything hooked up bled out we did have pressure on it which is good so let's go over here, get this thing turned back on. I did not want to turn it on ahead of time and have a potential of it being in a negative and then sucking air in. Not that this thing's probably working the greatest in the world, but there we go. Just like brand new. Somebody asked me again what this was. It was the MB5B, MB5B. So Vito, 
so far I really like it um, it's getting a little dirty but you know that's gonna happen no nowhere or anything like that everything's working pretty good in there got my probes in there got my probes for refrigerant and for like vacuum okay surprisingly uh, we got a little bit uh, we're on a 30 degree evaporator on R22 yeah we're really mainly just vapor down there and that so let's go ahead and slowly add it because we are dumping it right into the suction port we are doing a liquid but we're going to modulate it in slow we're going to watch our weight scale to see about how fast we're doing it now i did bump it so it is wirelessly transmitting over here to the testo this is the 557 which is their best model i got it because i had better luck with the older 557 uh, not so much because it has a four port manifold but i did get it because the uh, transducer seemed like it was better on the old one. Now on this newer one, I don't know how the newer 5550s are. So I got a little scratch on there. But other than it wiped off there, the 557, that's the model it is. You can tell because it's a four port. As always, check out True Tech Tools. Save yourself 8% with discount code survival. Uh, but yeah, starting to get a little bit of flashing. That's good. So hopefully we'll get, get up there fairly soon. We'll be able to maybe check some subcooling and stuff. See where we're at on that. 1.6 degree subcooling so far at four pounds. Starting to get some flow through there. Hard to see it, but it is. So while that's adding slowly, I wouldn't normally walk away from it. We'll start scanning for leaks while it's under pressure, you know, under high pressure. Yeah, that's your economizer for outside air, I believe. Here's the outside coming in. And then this is gonna be a return coming in. And depending on which one it is they pick, which looks like to me. Oh, wow. Yeah, that made a difference. I could hear the fan start to crank, it's having a heck of a time. Yeah, you can see the duct suck in, so it's sucking outside air in there. Yep, there's your filters, there's your big-ass blower. So there's your outside air. It's got one, one open there because it's broke, which is nice. And then you can see here the other half. So when you flip that up, you can see that's outside air. I don't know if they did that on purpose or not. Kind of makes me think they probably did. One thing that's kind of scary is could be uh, freezing up a coil if, uh, if things went down. Okay, that kind of makes it simple enough. So let's go ahead and just kind of ready to see here. See if that pop off there. Oh wow, we're already leaking something fierce. That's great. Let's go to high. That's great. Go to low. That's great. So I don't know if I'm leaking on that. Could be leaking on my valve. Okay, we're at eight pounds. Let's go ahead and stop adding. We could either go to parts per million, see how bad we're, what we're going on. Oh crap, look how bad that is. Okay, we're at the 200s up top. Jeez. Man, that's the last thing I need is this crap. See how it kind of comes in handy. So one thing I learned at the AHR was that the manual zero, which is what I've got it in now, where you basically hit the zero button, allows you to narrow it down. So you get close, like now, and you zero it. Knocks it down to nothing. This gives you more range all the way up to something really high. Hit it again. There, it just went down again than what the uh, parts per million mode even does. So what I think I got, remember when I originally said that the suction port there looked pretty bad? So I get over here, hit zero, keep getting closer, hit zero. I get right up on that bad boy and she goes berserko. So we can go over here to uh, parts per million. We're already in the 190s. This is gonna get stupid, I'm sure. Should be right up to the 9,000s. 
Yeah. 5,000 area. I've been scanning my sight glass, nowhere near the level. I thought maybe I had something leaking on my hoses, even back here on that valve that I had before, all in the 90s, stuff like that, which is residual. You get up here though, and even up on top, I'm not really getting nothing stupid. And my hoses, not bad. Get down here where oil was at, and that's where she goes nuts. So let's go ahead and, yeah, they're 4,000. Let's go ahead and squirt it. It'd probably blow it right off. My hope is I can just tighten the bolts up. We'll see. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I don't know if we're leaking on that. Service valve does not appear to be. Unless we're leaking on all this garbage back here. So I just rescanned it again, and it does appear that we have bubbles forming right here. You can see it, micro bubbles. Um, it's such a big area all the way around there that that's likely distributing it all the way around. I'm going to go grab a wrench uh, socket and see if we can tighten that thing up. And then if not, we'll have to order a seal for it. it must be just a 16th under, maybe a 15 16th or something because the one inch was a little bit big, but it fit three uh, half inch drive. I was gonna use my 3 8 torque wrench there, which I don't have a half inch on the truck. Usually 3 8 does most everything. Well, anyhow, I was able to get maybe a I don't know, not a lot, a lot, a lot. I maybe about that much swing if I'm lucky. And it appears it may have worked. So I'm gonna come up here now and I just leave it there. I'm getting one to zero. We were way higher than that earlier, as you seen earlier. May have gotten it, we'll see. I'm gonna scan it all over again. But it sure seems like we've slowed it down tremendously if that's the case which is great if so. Yeah, we're getting a little bit around that packing nut there, which I've got a cap down there that might fit it. I don't think it will, but I haven't tightened that packing at all. Whereas before we were leaking bad on that suction, which I hate having to use uh, king valves to open and close. Myself, I prefer to have a Schrader core built right into the copper any day over this crap because all you're doing is you got big wrenches you got to get out. It's more of a hassle. I don't like it. Uh, anytime I get a chance to add one, I will. So we're going to go back to just high, see what's going on, take her away. Because, I mean, it will automatically lock out if it's a bad enough leak. We're still liquidy, and I got 21 pounds in there. Like I said, it holds 38. cap there. I don't know why it didn't. Uh, there's the suction one right here. Not sure why all these didn't get put back on. Somebody must have forgot. The water overfills, goes down to this uh, spouting, and the spouting goes down to a drain. Right, you can see we're starting to get decent liquid rolling through. Yeah, We've got decent liquid flowing through there, and we're starting to get a little subcooling. Um, I'm surprised it worked. It may start leaking again. Honestly, they really need to make a decision what they're going to do because R22 is not going to be uh, available at all. Once it's gone, it's gone. So it's uh, silly, but a couple grand's cheaper than lots and lots of grand's. So I have no clue what these cost, but I guarantee you it's not cheap. And those are the people in the UK and all the other foreign countries. Yes, you can use it. Yes, you can put it in a leaking system. Depends on how many pounds it holds. It's under 50 pounds. So yeah, don't need to hear it. It's not fair, wah, wah, wah. You know what? Your climate Paris Accord and all that bull crap, that's the reason why it is the way it is. If you don't like it, then change who you vote for. Even though they got everybody indoctrinated now. All right, we are solid. And we have three degrees of subcooling. You can kind of hear it unloading every so often. See the oil down there still. I think we'll stop right here at the four pound mark. That puts us at 25 pounds. Uh, there's no receiver on this, so we don't want to go stupid. 
So therefore, theoretically, you can't even charge by side glass. That's why we double checked it all against the subcooling. And that compressor's rebuilt already. You can see it says good as new. Must be referring to it been changed. We'll watch it for a bit, see if it starts flashing off. But yeah, I think we got it. I know we can feel cold air coming out of our hole here, which feels pretty darn good. Put a piece of tape over that here in a second. Let's go over here and look at that display and see if uh, that temperature gauge is reading a little more accurate now. Cold deck running 40, 42 degrees, not bad. That cold deck is running 43. So it's either 41 or 42. Actually, I probably bet you it's two. So 42 and this one here is running 246, 46. Hot deck on both of them. That one's running 140. That one's running 120. Return air temperature is 78. It's going up and down <laughs> all over the place. Okay, let's go ahead and scan that over. That was our biggest one originally. Does not appear to be going off. We can try it on Super, which is pretty extreme. Nothing. Back onto that pop-off, nothing. Threads, nothing. I think what was happening is it was falling off the backside. Look, that's on Super. Nothing. Nothing on that thing going off. Wow. I'm gonna say I got it. I'm surprised I didn't figure it would work and it may not work when it's all said and done, but as of right now, it is working. I'm not going to fit on it. Uh, I think we're good. Obviously there's a little bit there on that service valve that's open, but nothing nothing on that, that seal there. We are still solid. We got three degrees of subcooling. I'm gonna write these numbers down so I have something to remember next time all right guys that's gonna wrap this one up hope you enjoyed the video all right guys that's gonna wrap this one up hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a like give it a share keep subscribing click the notification button and until next time we'll catch you on the next one later